expecting on the market this morning. Opening in the red, it seems that uh, risk aversion still pretty much off the table today. Moira, we did see those comments from BHP Billiton spooking even the US market. Those comments that iron ore demand from China is flattening out and it, it, it's probably at single digit growth or heading that way. We did also see China coming out to raise gasoline and uh, diesel prices for the second time this year. So once again, fears over China's growth really dominating that US session, which was down by 0.3%. In fact, we saw those growth sensitive stocks, some of the worst performers during <coughs> the session. And if we have a look at commodity prices, Prices. Not surprising to see some falls there. We saw copper down by 1.6%. Lead was a big faller on the London's Metals Exchange, down by 4.5%. And we also saw gold down by 1%, and oil prices down by 2.3%. One company, though, that which managed to buck the trend was Tiffany's. It came out with a fourth quarter result, which was below expectations, but still looking relatively strong. So we saw that stock rising by 6.7%. So I guess while the material space will be in focus today, we'll uh, be behind the fall on the Australian share market. Market. One area which could see some green on screen are the grain stocks. We did see Glencore coming out with that takeover bid for Canada's Zutara at $5.8 billion. So we're expecting to see stocks like Glencore back in focus. Of course, last week we saw the Packer backed Elliston Capital uh, t raising its stake in Glencore. So it does look like it may be a good day for those agricultural stocks, but overall the market expected to fall. Yeah, David Jones, as we just heard out with its result and strategic update. Julia, one thing uh, uh, just from all of the information that's come out from David Jones this morning that I think the market perhaps could be a little bit concerned about, and that is, of course, that it has cut its dividend. And for a long time, this was something which kept investors in the stock despite the disappointing results that we have been seeing from the upmarket retailer. What's your view on the dividend and what it's likely to do in terms of investor appetite for DJ stock? I mean, if we have a look at David Jones as a stock, this is a stock that is very lowly geared, not a lot of debt at all. And if we have a look at David Jones, it has been supported somewhat by the valuation because of the fall that we've seen in the stock price, as well as uh, the dividend yield. But we're not surprising to see a cut in that dividend, given all the changes that have been announced this morning. If we have a look at some of those changes, looking at six new stores, 200 new staff across IT operations, as well as uh, the digital uh, channels. And if we have a look at uh, its strategy looking at that omni-channel strategy trying to raise its online sales from 4.9 percent of sales where it is now to about 10 percent so it does look like those changes are going to have a big impact on full year uh, profit expecting to see a fall of 35 to 40 percent there and that's really because of capital expenditure of about 70 to 80 million dollars for the year of course, David Jones also coming out with its first half result and we saw a fall of 20% there. The company's guidance was a fall of 15 to 20%, so coming in on the lower end of that guidance. Gross margins, we saw a fall of 190 basis points, so almost 2% there at 37.9%. And that's really because it's been trying to clear its excess stock. And if we have a look at inventory, it was down by 3.4% compared to the figures in, at the end of January last year. So it does look like it's managed to decrease inventory, clear some of that uh, excess stock, but at a cost to its margin. So there has been heavy discounting there. Of course, the market's also going to be viewing the commentary about the first few weeks of the uh, second half and it does look like the first seven weeks of uh, the the, half, the new half have been in line with the second quarter as well so it does look like no improvement in conditions there so altogether David Jones coming out with a lot of news today mm. the market's really going to be focusing on the strategic update uh, the first half result the uh, the full year guidance and of course the financial services division earnings expected to fall by 50% after FY13 when that contract with Amex disappears so it does look like those media reports on Monday were right so David Jones a lot of news today it does look like there's going to be weakness in the stock the question is is this enough to really turn around the company from both the cyclical and the uh, structural chal challenges that it faces indeed and we can see David Jones Julia just opening down around 13% at the open it's sitting down around 9.9% at the moment. So whether or not uh, it's opened at its lows of the day, we will keep an eye on throughout the rest of the session. Let's talk Kathmandu because it's all about retailers today. One particular thing that I noted in the Kathmandu uh, release was of course the, the improvement to sales for the period, up 15%. But this was achieved out of course lower margins with cost cuts. Now they can't continue to do that. So certainly the, the, the risks that they associate with moving into the second half, weather risks as well as sluggish consumers consumer spending is going to be a serious concern. 
Well, sales growth for Kathmandu is coming out from rollout of stores, and that's seen in the numbers. If we look at sales growth, that was around about 15%. But if you have a look at same store growth, um, then that's only at 8%. And the difference really comes in the new stores that have been opening up. And Kathmandu's strategy is going to be that it keeps on rolling out new stores to help uh, support sales. So it is targeting 150 stores in Australia and New Zealand. So that store rollout should help to underpin sales. Well, Kathmandu is in a very different position from uh, uh, David Jones is a specialty retailer and it's also got its own brands which means its margins are much higher so while we did see a 2% drop in margins margins are still at 62.7% that's a massive amount that's compared to David Jones which is uh, where the margin the gross margin is at about 38% so you can see the difference in margins is absolutely huge and that's because of Kathmandu's uh, vertically integrated model also the high Australian dollar is quite supportive supporting outbound and travel and that helps us spur on demand as well but this result as you mentioned more are really coming in below expectations we were expecting to see a profit result of 9.4 million dollars it's coming at six million dollars if you strip out the one-offs then that makes it eight million dollars but altogether a pretty weak result so it does look like that retailing sector even with some of these companies with these fatter margins rolling out new stores still coming in below the market's expectations so market expectations aren't very high in this retailing sector but it does look like they're going to go even lower after the news coming through from David Jones and Kathmandu today.